about what your vision for really uh, moving the health agenda in terms of the uninsured as well as uh, I, disparities that were our state. I, I'd be proud, and, and, and that could eat all of, all, all of my time. So I'm going to do. I'm going to do it do real it quick. Short. Number one, I was on the disparities study, as you probably remember, right. uh, that issued that report about five years ago, um, and was one of the driving forces on that committee. There is uh, ethnic racial uh, disparity in the delivery of, of services. Uh, some of it's language related, some of it's doctors and nurses having assumptions of people. Uh, uh, certain people will abuse drugs, therefore we won't, we won't prescribe drugs. Or, or certain people won't remember to take drugs, therefore we don't do it. There's all kinds of disparities that work into the system. Uh, education, education, education. Don't assume that a, a nurse practitioner or a nurse or a doctor understands the cultural differences. So there's lots of things. Access to health care. Um, I normally end my answer about health care and, and universal health care. Uh, I normally end it by talking about public health. But the reality is I'm standing next to this person. Uh, and, and, and then secondly, um, I'm the only person going around the state who says, no matter what we do when it comes to universal health care or insurance program, we've got to rebuild our public health system. And part of it is with great agencies like yours. Part of it is with, is with cities like mine. We have a good health department. But if we had more money to be directly engaged um, uh, in supplying uh, medical services, we could drive down the cost. We just had a conversation just about <coughs> five minutes ago um, about one of the things that, that we, you know, we're, we're, we're getting in some places, although the governor, by the way, the governor tried to cut out preventative dental care uh, in her budget. Mm -hmm. Now that's even after, that's even after we've established what, for a good two and a half, three years, this very close relationship to dental health and heart disease. They're related, folks. And, and the governor, sought to take that money out of the budget. So we need a great public health system. And it's, it's far less cost, uh, uh, costly. The services that you're providing, keeping people out of the emergency room, saves us. When I ran, I'm going to give you a statistic. When I ran for governor the last time, the average emergency room visit was $750. It's now in, in excess of $1,150. But if you don't have access to a doctor for regular care, or a dentist, and you develop an abscess, which is what we were talking about. Where do you take your child? You take them in the emergency room. So you pay $1,150 $1 for a $75 um, visit. And by the way, who pays it? You do. Correct. So we've got to do that. I'm very encouraged by what the president's done, setting aside $649 billion over the next 10 years. I think this president is going to lead the way. I think we've got to follow with, uh, with him. Uh, however, what we should do now, and if I become governor, and I said this when I ran the first time, uh, every child in the state should, should have access to, to health care. Uh, my original proposal was that every child uh, living within 385% of a poverty rate would be entitled to health care uh, at a largely subsidized rate. Mm -hmm. And I was criticized by other folks in, in saying that that's where we should start. They'd say, well, my plan relied on permission uh, from George Bush. Well, you know what happened in the intervening years? Eight other states got that permission, and Connecticut didn't. And you know what the difference was? I wasn't governor. So if you want health care, remember that I'm the son of a public health nurse. If you remember that, you'll vote the right way. <laughs>